ここは僕の行きつけの店だ落ち着いた店内に静かな客層そして何よりここのコーヒーゼリーは絶品であるコーヒー専門店の自家製コーヒーゼリー市販のものとは比較にならない一品だやはりこっちかたかがコーヒーゼリー1個にあんなもの誰が買うんだまったく僕だ Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the coffee jelly from the disastrous life of Psyche K. Or Psychic, or I'm not entirely sure how you say it. All I do know is that this guy has a serious affinity for this refreshing Japanese summertime snack. We're gonna start off with the store bought version here, which we're gonna crack open and let it、uh, kind of piss all over our counter there, just to get a baseline for what the real deal stuff is like. I'm gonna dump it out into a bowl just to inspect its gelatinousness, and then each one of these comes with its own individual cream, which to me tastes just like the little creamer cups that you might get in a diner. Pour that over top and let's tuck in. And there's very few things here not to. Like it's coffee flavored jello with cream on top. It's refreshing, it's light, but as our titular character emphasizes, it's not going to hold a candle to something made from scratch. A little translator app research, and we're going to try to make three levels of homemade coffee jelly. The first and most basic of which is going to be made with either instant or store bought coffee. Both are going to end up tasting about the same, but if you can get your hands on some canned Japanese coffee like this, we can at least try and be accurate.、It、tastes pretty much like coffee, of which we are going to need to measure out two cups, which we are going to deposit most of. Into a medium saucepan, reserving maybe three quarters of a cup on the side, in which we are going to dissolve one packet of gelatin. Just go ahead and add that, give it a little tiny whisking if you like to make sure that everybody is saturated, and then the rest of the coffee is headed over to the stove top, where, over medium low flame, we're going to bring it to a rolling boil. Once a rolling boil has been reached, we're going to dump in our gelatin coffee mixture. And you might notice by now that this is exactly how you make virtually any kind of jello. Just add the hydrated gelatin and tiny whisk over medium low heat until completely incorporated. Then we're going to kill the heat and let this guy cool off a little bit, maybe five minutes, just so we don't crack any glass down the line. Once it's cooled off a bit, simply ladle into your serving vessels of choice. I was unable to find bowls that look exactly like the ones from the anime, so I'm sorry, this is the best I can do. And then, with near extreme caution, we're going to gently place it into the fridge for at least three hours until gelatinous. This has about the same wiggle factor as the stuff from the store, but maybe just a little bit more wiggly because we're using gelatin. And since this is level one coffee gel, We're gonna use some canned whipped cream. And this tastes fine. It's coffee flavored jello with whipped cream. You like coffee? You like jello? You like whipped cream? It's fine. But it is definitely not anything special. For that, we need to head on over to level two, where we're gonna be using a more traditional Japanese thickener called agar agar. This is a thickener derived from seaweed, so it has the fringe benefit of being vegetarian. But the most important upgrade is the coffee. I don't wanna bring our coffee to a full boil, as that will diminish its flavor and complexity. So we're gonna make a sort of coffee jelly Americano by making two. Thirds of a cup of espresso. We'll be covering how to make espresso on basics soon enough, so for now I'm going to use this fancy machine that does all the work for me. And since the typical ratio of water to espresso for an Americano is two to one, that means into a medium saucepan goes one and one third cups of water, along with one and a half teaspoons or half a packet of agar agar, which I really hope I'm pronouncing correctly because I'm already mispronouncing so many things today. Anyway, just like gelatin, agar agar needs to be activated by being brought to a boil, so we are going to tiny whisk that to dissolve along with a quarter. Cup of sugar. After about one minute, when no sugar or agar agar crystals remain, we're going to kill the heat, allow the mixture to cool off for about five minutes before adding our two thirds of a cup of espresso. Make sure you taste for sweetness and adjust accordingly before doling out into your designated serving vessels or molds. I'm going with these little ramekins because they're going to help me make this style of presentation of the coffee jelly, and very cautiously into the fridge they go. Now, agar agar sets up a whole lot faster than gelatin, so these might be ready to go in as little as an hour, depending on the size of your mold. I'm going to Loosen this around the edges with a paring knife and invert into a nice champagne coupe. And then it's on to our next designated upgrade, the whipped cream, which we are going to make by whipping some. Cream. Into our whipping vessel goes, I don't know, like a cup of cream and maybe a tablespoon or two of sugar, which we are going to whip to stiff peaks or big fat chunks like this, which will work just fine. We're just going to drop this into a pastry bag with a decorative tip and use it to festoon our coffee jelly with decorative gobs of cream, comma, whipped. And then it's time for the taste test. And the first thing to observe is the difference in texture between the agar agar and gelatin based coffee jellies. The agar agar is much firmer and a little bit less bouncy, and it almost crumbles in your mouth instead of 
dissolves. So it's going to come down to your personal preference, but I'm happy to say that the gelatinizing process had no effect on the coffee's complexity, depth, and richness. But what about that 3,000 yen or roughly 27 US dollar version of the caffeinated treat? For that, we need to go really all out. This is Kopi Luwak, the most expensive coffee in the world, because it is eaten and pooped out by Indonesian civets. Now, before we go any further, I should say that this coffee is often associated with animal cruelty, so make sure that you're buying from a reputable company that ensures fair trade and only harvests from wild, uncaged animals. That, and just don't buy this coffee, because this bag costed well over $100, and there is no way that any kind of coffee is worth that kind of money. That being said, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it right with a conical burr grinder. Just read up on how to use this newfangled thing. Set it to 7 for a nice medium grind, which is going to be perfect for a pour-over brew method, which promises to extract the flavors of any coffee in its purest and most unadulterated form. Let's go ahead and grind up some of this highly overpriced poop coffee, which I'm relieved to say doesn't smell anything like poop, just smells like coffee. Ready our fancy boy hipster hand-blown coffee pot. If you want to see how to do a really proper pour-over, go check out my basics episode on coffee, but the long and short of it is we're heating our water to 205 degrees Fahrenheit, wetting our paper filter, dumping out the excess water, filling our filter with 37 grams of medium grind coffee, and preferably using a gooseneck kettle like this one, going to slowly start pouring in the water, straight down the center at first, and then once the water rises up the sides of the coffee in a sort of elliptical massaging fashion. We're then going to let this sit until all the water has filtered through the coffee. This shouldn't take more than one or two minutes. Once this stage is complete, we're going to use the hot water to knock the grinds down off the sides of the filter, and then repeat the elliptical sort of agitating pouring pattern until we've reached 500 total grams of water. Let that filter on through, at least another one to two minutes, remove the filter, and serve. Thank you very much, Erica Voni, for teaching me how to make the perfect cup of joe. So now we just have to try a taste test of this poop coffee that regularly fetches a price of $30 to $100 per cup. And about the nicest thing that I could say about it is that it is incredibly smooth, zero acidity, zero bitterness, doesn't need any milk or sugar, but the worst thing I could say about it is that it's boring. It's kind of like the best cup of diner coffee that I've ever had in my life, certainly not worth $30 a cup, but for the sake of price accuracy, we shall forge ahead. Just so we don't have to brew the actual coffee too hot, we're going to pre-dissolve the agar agar before pouring into and potentially ruining our favorite gooseneck kettle. From there, it's the exact same process. 37 grams of coffee, 500 grams total water added in two stages. This way, we're getting a perfect extraction on the coffee with our thickeners pre-incorporated. All that's left to do is to pour it into our desired mold, fridge for at least two hours before extracting onto a plate. And there you have it, the most expensive coffee jelly. And I'm going to quote Jeremy Clarkson here in the world, which I'm going to decorate with a festive circumference of whipped cream. I might not have been able to find this goofy glass dome thing, but I think we got the presentation down. All there is left to do is try it, and I think the pour-over extraction method works best. It maintains the coffee's flavor and keeps everything mellow, but is it a member of the Clean Plate Club? At these prices, you bet your ass it is. So definitely no need to indulge in Kopi Luwak, but if you tried using the pour-over method with agar agar or gelatin, might I recommend cutting it into little cubes, placing it into a nice decorative bowl, and topping with lightly whipped, lightly sweetened heavy cream. Though oh, it's a little bit too much because this is far and away my favorite method and presentation. And I think Psychic K, Psychic would be proud in his very matter of fact, condescending way.